Welcome to First United Methodist Church. And welcome to First United Methodist Church of Taylor. We welcome you to the house of God. Welcome to worship online. You now please join us in our call to worship. Please respond in bold. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts with your fiery presence. Let your flame burn within us, stirring us to action. Come, Holy Spirit. Energize our lives to work for God. Let your wind of hope swirl around us, lifting and moving us from complacency. Come, Holy Spirit, pour your blessing on us. Let your presence challenge us to proclaim God's presence and love in everything we say and do. Amen. Please join me in our opening prayer. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples, hidden in an upper room in Jerusalem. A violent wind and tongues of fire were the symbols of the new thing happening in their lives. May your Holy Spirit burst into our lives today, encouraging and inspiring us to proclaim boldly the good news of Jesus Christ who offers healing and hope to all people. Amen. Amen. Please turn to 420 in your hymnal, breath, uh, breathe on me, breath of God. June. 
Yes, it's so hot outside. I know. I need a fan, don't you? Yes. Oh my gosh, I need a fan. Here, you want to borrow mine? You can Thank use you. mine. I love. Is this made out of paper? It is. I love so, that. So tell me about what does a fan make when you when you move it? It makes wind. It makes air. Well, how do you know? But I don't see the wind. What what is? How do you know it's there? You feel it. You don't have to see it. You just feel it. You feel it. You know what? That reminds me of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, today we celebrate Pentecost, and God gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And have you ever seen the Holy Spirit, Miss Julia? No, have you? I I have not. But I see evidence of the Holy Spirit, and I feel the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Just like I can't see the wind, I can feel the wind. I can see the things that the wind blows, mm -hmm. like it blows the leaves outside. And that's what makes me think of the Holy Spirit, because I can feel God's presence with me, especially when I'm in prayer, or if I'm scared, or if I'm sad and I need God, I can feel his presence with me, and I can see the Holy Spirit in the things that other people do. Yeah. Like when you, Miss Julia, went to go buy groceries for some of our church members and did some nice things for them, I saw the Holy Spirit in you. Oh my gosh. Isn't that you. awesome? It is. I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so <laughs> glad the Holy Spirit is here. Let's say a quick prayer. Dear God, Thank you for your gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for reassuring us that we are not alone and you are here with us always. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please rise for the second hymn. <laughs> Today, 
May we feel your presence this day and every day, just as they did on that day of Pentecost. We pray, God, this morning for all those who are hurting. We pray, God, for the Cobb family, for Brian, Shelley, Clayton, and Connor. We pray for their extended family and friends. We pray, God, for the Gill family, their extended family and friends. We pray, God, for our community, and we pray for your church. May you rush into our hearts and infiltrate our souls. May we be empowered by your spirit to live a life more faithful to you. Remind us, God, that you have come to bless and prepare us for your service. Ignite our hearts, inspire our minds, move our bodies and our being and to be a part of the celebration and proclamation, to be a part of your healing, of your love and mercy. Move us forward, God, into your world and help us to remember that you have given to us what we need to be your disciples. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here in this space and in our lives. May you continue to empower us to continue proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ and of your kingdom. This we pray in Jesus' name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Gifted with the grace of God and clothed with the power from on high, let us now offer ourselves to the building of God's kingdom. Please bow your heads. Bless these gifts, O Lord of all, that we might worship you with great joy and serve your people with great love. In Christ's name, amen. amen. amen.
to let the world go by and not acknowledge your presence. But you have challenged us to come alive again with your love and words of healing mercy. Forgive our hesitant witness and our complacent spirits. Heal our fears and our wounds. Help us to be agents of healing and hope for others. Challenge and inspire us to overcome our feelings of inadequacy and remind us that you have called us beloved and have given us what we need to proclaim your good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Don't be afraid. God's Holy Spirit brings you healing, comfort, and hope. You are being prepared to serve God in some mighty ways. Rejoice. God's Holy Spirit is with you always. Amen. Our scripture lesson is from uh, Acts 2, verses uh, 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitor, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, your sons and daughters, Will prophesy your young men will see visions your old men will dream dreams even on my servants both men and women I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke the Sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come and be with us this morning. Fill our minds, fill our hearts, Fill our very being. Encourage us, empower us to be the church that you have called us to be. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes there is a song that's stuck in my head that I can't get rid of. Sometimes I remember that song and I sing it if the tune is easy and I can easily follow along with it. Other times, if I can't sing it, I just hum it. But then yet, there are other times that I can't sing it, I can't hum it, and I just keep reciting these words in my head over and over again. And so I don't know what song that is stuck in your head 
or at this moment, but the one that I am thinking about is the song that goes something like, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come and flood this place and fill the atmosphere. I don't know if you've ever heard that song, but it's one that I've heard about maybe a couple of years ago, and I love that song. And now I'm not just thinking about that song because today is Pentecost Sunday. Nope, I've actually been thinking about that song probably most of the season. Most of the Easter season, I have been thinking about this song. And part of that reason, perhaps, is because I remember the words of Jesus where he had told the disciples that he has to return back to God. He has to return back to the Father. He's got to go back to the heavens, but yet he was going to send them the Holy Spirit. It is those promises of Jesus that keeps uh, going over and over in my mind. I kept thinking about that word, uh, those words of Jesus, thinking about his promises to his disciples, his promises to us, that makes me think of that song. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come and flood this place and fill the atmosphere. And so if you remember uh, last week, it was Ascension Sunday, and the disciples and Jesus were saying their goodbyes to one another. They were saying their goodbyes, but if you remember, Jesus did tell the disciples to hang out a little bit in the city of Jerusalem, to not leave the city, but rather wait there for some time because he was going to send them the Holy Spirit, that he was not abandoning them, but rather he was going to send them an advocate, an advocate that can continue to be with them and that will continue to help them during their, their struggling time. And so this week, Jesus delivers on his promises. God delivers on his promise and sends the advocate, the Holy Spirit, to be with the disciples, to be with the people. If you'll remember as well that this promise did not just originate with Jesus, but it actually originated in the Old Testament with the prophet Joel. And so here today, we are uh, celebrating Pentecost Sunday. We are celebrating this special day in the life of the church, how God sends the Holy Spirit and delivers on the promises to the people, to the disciples of sending them an advocate. And it is not just an ordinary advocate. It is not just another representation but rather it is the most powerful advocate that you can have in this life. It is a, the most powerful support that exists that you would want on your side. It is the most powerful advocate that money cannot buy. It is not for hire. You cannot buy this. No amount of money can afford this advocate, but rather this advocate, the Holy Spirit, comes to us free of charge. All that you and I would need to do is to be able to ask the Holy Spirit uh, and tell the Holy Spirit that you are welcome here and accept the help of the Holy Spirit. So what an amazing gift, because it is a gift from God. It is a gift from Jesus of sending us, the church and individual followers of Christ, the Holy Spirit to be with us. Many times we don't know that we need an advocate, but we need an advocate because many times we try to handle life and we can't handle life on our own. We need a powerful advocate like the Holy Spirit to help us deal with life circumstances, with life situations. Many times we try to represent ourselves 
but what we need is an advocate who can represent us, who can stand up for us, who can speak for us, who can fight for us. What we need to handle life and to be able to deal with the circumstances of life is a powerful advocate like the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a powerful reminder to you and I that God is here, that God is with us, and that Jesus has not abandoned us, but rather Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God, the Trinity, is with us each and every day. If we are wanting the Holy Spirit to help us deal with life and the circumstances of life, all we need to do is to welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives, into this space, so that way we know that we have a powerful advocate that no matter what it is that we are facing, though no matter what it is that we are dealing with in life, that we do have the presence of God, that we do have the Holy Spirit with us to be able to deal with the circumstances of life, to be able to deal with life itself. It is Pentecost Sunday. It is a celebration in the church. It is a festival in the life of the church, not just for us here in Taylor, but all around the country and all around the world. All churches everywhere are celebrating this day because this is the day that God delivers on the promises of sending the Holy Spirit to be with the church and to be with the people. The story tells us that there were thousands of people who were gathered in Jerusalem. It has, had been 50 days since the Passover. It had been 50 days since the resurrection of Christ. And today there were thousands of people who were gathered there in the city. And then it happened. They were there because they were celebrating of when God had given Moses the Ten Commandments. So it was a huge celebration. And then it happened when the disciples and people were gathered in a house that the fierce wind, the forceful wind that blew through the house and things were about to get crazy and things were about to get wild. And all the people who are gathered in the house, they felt the wind blowing through. The wind was fierce and individual flames lighted up in each one of them and they all were started speaking at different languages as the Holy Spirit had enabled them. Things were starting to get wild and I do believe that this is probably the beginning of a house party. This was probably the beginning of what they call a house party. It started in the city of Jerusalem. And it's like that song that goes, it's getting hot in here. Literally, it was getting hot in the house and in the city. The house was on fire. The church was on fire. And everyone was wondering what was going on because it was only 9 o'clock in the morning. And we're told that about 3,000 people had gathered around and to hear Peter proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we hear in the story that about 3,000 people were baptized in the Holy Spirit. From that moment on, the church was born. The church was on fire. The house was on fire. The people was on fire. They now had a new mission. They now had a new purpose, a new meaning, and a new life that was given to them by the Holy Spirit. And the people were getting all fired up. And they weren't getting just fired up for themselves. They were getting fired up for the purpose and for the mission of Jesus Christ. They now could have, they now had an advocate that could help them face whatever their fears may have been. They now had a powerful advocate, the Holy Spirit, who was now with them, enabling, enabling them to do mighty things. Whatever it was that they were fearing, they now had a powerful representation and an advocate with them. 
The people were ready to face the world. The people were ready to face whatever circumstances that life had thrown at them. The people were now able to face life itself. They now had the power of the Holy Spirit with them and they knew that whatever it was that they were facing, whatever obstacles, whatever challenges they were facing, they knew they could overcome it with the help of the Advocate, with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Church, whatever it is that you are facing today, whatever fears that you may be facing today, whatever struggles, whatever obstacles that you are facing today, you do need the help of the Holy Spirit to be able to overcome it. Are you facing challenges or fear of tomorrow? Fear of not having enough money? Fear of not having a job? Fear of anxiety, of depression, of being alone, fear of family, fear of so many things in life that we do not have any control over. Jesus has sent us the Holy Spirit to help us daily with whatever it is that we are facing. You and I have the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to do mighty things that otherwise we would not be able to handle on our own. Whatever it is that you are facing today, remember the promises of God has been given to us. That is the promise of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has come so that you and I do not have to face life alone. Whatever uncertainty there is in the future, we have the power of the Holy Spirit to guide us, to counsel us, and to help us daily with the struggles that we encounter in life. Whatever it is that you are dealing with, fear of school, fear of the unknown, the power of the Holy Spirit, the Advocate is our best representation that we can get here in life. So accept the power of the Holy Spirit and allow it to help you, to help us individually and collectively as a family and as a church to overcome the challenges and the obstacles of life. Allow the Holy Spirit to fight for you, to speak for you, to represent you in whatever it is that you are dealing with. We have been given a new purpose. We have been given a new meaning. We have been given a mission. We have been given a new life. It is up to you and I to accept that new life with the Holy Spirit so that we can collectively as a church continue the mission of the church to continue the mission that you and I have been given and that is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ so that whoever hears it and everyone who hears it that they too may have an opportunity at this new life that you and I are experiencing, that new life that you and I have been given. Allow the Holy Spirit to lift you up and continue to inspire you so that we individually and collectively can continue to boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to whoever it is that we meet and everyone around the world to tell them of the goodness of God, to tell them about this new life that is offered to us and to everyone through the person of Jesus Christ, and that you and I have the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to deal with life situation. May you offer the Holy Spirit to everyone that you encounter in the world today. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to counsel you. The church, amen. amen. If you're now, please rise for our closing hymn.